Now, everyone has seen the typical submarine scenes in movies or television where a sweaty crew is anxiously awaiting something to happen. Then, a dramatic thud is heard, and the submarine is rocked to its potential grave. This video will be covering the ways in which anti-submarine warfare was carried out with depth charges. Primarily, we will be focusing on American depth charges. Ranging from Mark 6 to Mark 16, we will be only reviewing the ones that saw widespread use and avoiding the ones that saw extremely low production numbers or were developed during the war and filled it after it ended. Depth charges worked by using hydrostatic fuses, measuring the pressure of the water around the weapon and detonating it at a certain reset depth, unless they contain magnetic pistols. By far, the most produced and common model was the Mark VI, which essentially was a revised World War I era design of the Mark III. First entering service in 1938, it weighed a total of 420 pounds. 300 of that was the explosive charge. It would sink at roughly 8 feet per second and with the ability to function between 50 to 300 feet. It would see a slight modification later on in the war, reducing the charge to 200 pounds and adding a lead weight, thus increasing the sink rate to 12 feet per second. Next, we have the Mark 7. This was also a redesigned depth charge from the First World War. It was an improved version of the Mark IV. It entered service as well in 1938, and it weighed in at 745 pounds. 600 of that was the explosive charge. It would sink at 9 feet per second, and detonate between 50 to 300 feet as well. In 1942, the Mark VII would see a slight revision as well. The charge was reduced to 400 pounds, and a lead weight was added to increase the sink rate to 13 feet per second. Now, it's time for the Mark VIII. Being designed in 1941, and entering service in 1943, these weighed 525 pounds in total, with the explosive charge making up 270 pounds of that. It would sink at 11.5 feet per second and had a range of 50 to 500 feet. This was the first depth charge that used a magnetic pistol and had an aluminum casing. The magnetic pistol would be armed at 35 feet and detonate around 20 to 25 feet from the submarine. These were found to be incredibly unreliable as they required heavy maintenance to ensure they worked properly. And despite seeing massive production numbers, it would be pretty much relegated to reserve duties and stockpile. Now, onto the Mark IX, first being designed in 1941 and entering service in 1943. It was a revolutionary design with a teardrop shape for an increased sink rate. Early versions weighed 320 pounds, they had an explosive charge of 200 pounds, and sank at 14.5 feet per second. The later version was the Mod 2, and weighed 340 pounds, with an explosive charge of 190 pounds. This one could sink up to 22.7 feet per second, or add spoilers to slow it down. These would see use from 50 to 1,000 feet, depending on the mod. A more accurate depiction of the destructive effect of depth charges is given by Admiral Jellicoe in the Crisis of the Naval War. Within 14 feet, it will destroy the submarine. Within 25 feet, it will disable it, and within 60 feet, it will have a demoralizing effect. Keeping this in mind, we will now see the methods used to deploy depth charges. Dropping depth charges off the stern via a rack or track was the standard practice. Typically, a rack could hold 5 to 8 depth charges. Early American ships, when not using the rack or tracks, were equipped with the Y gun. However, this would be quickly replaced by the K gun starting in 1941. These guns would use a blank cartridge to fire the arbors that held the depth charges. Typically, a ship would carry 4 to 8 of these depth charge projectors. The range on these was 60 to 175 yards, with a flight time of 3.4 to 5.1 seconds. The continuous evolution of depth charges and anti-submarine warfare led to the U-boat wolf packs in the beginning of the war being turned into the prey. Now that's going to wrap up another video. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I just want to say I appreciate all the feedback and support recently. Next week's video is going to be very different. It's going to be a new take on these videos. I hope it's something you guys enjoy as I'm personally enjoying the production of it. And with all that said, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one.